Chapter 7 Path of Peril Moonlight cast eerie shadows over the lichen-thin cap. A dozen snarling werewolves stalked in circles around Herman, Lefwin and Gifford. The creature's fur bristled and their teeth gleamed like daggers waiting to plunge into the trio's flesh. There's too many of them to try to fight and I doubt that we can outrun them. Herman whispered his voice trembling in time with the rest of his body. Lefwin, do you remember that song you played while we were at the Enduring the Storm? I think you should play it now. Is this really the time for music? Gifford cried, clutching his butt collecting jaw protectively, his eyes locked on the werewolves. I trust Herman's faith. Lefwin winked. She lifted her oak flute to her lips, and a soothing melody, delicate as a butterfly, began to weave its way through the tense air. Slowly, the melody worked its magic, seeping into the hearts of the predatory creatures like a lullaby from the heavens. Their heads drooped as if pulled by invisible strings. One by one, the werewolves' guttural growls faded, replaced by serene sighs. Their bodies swayed before succumbing to the sweet call of slumber. The creatures slumped to the ground, snores rumbling from their furry muscles. Let's go while they're asleep. Herman urged in a whisper, motioning for Lefwen and Gifford to follow him. The two brothers tried to quiet their hearts and tiptoe round the slumbering beasts while Lefwen skipped merrily playing a song. Once free from the circle of danger, they broke into a run, following the finder's map as they journeyed deeper into the woods. The labyrinth of trees seemed to huddle together, the gnarled limbs creaking and groaning in the wind. Moonlight filtered through the canopy, casting shadows that danced like spectres on the forest floor. Never thought I'd be grateful for Lefman's music. Gifford muttered, looking back at the camp disappearing into the darkness. Her gift is a blessing from the Lord. Herman said. Thanks. Isn't this exciting? Lefman exclaimed between breaths, her voice alive with enthusiasm. We're on a real quest, just like in your books. Hey, there are lights over there. Gifford said. As they pushed through the underbrush, they stumbled upon a breathtaking sight, a village shimmering in the twilight, gracefully crafted and nestled within the trees. Delicate silver leaves rustled above them, casting dappled patterns on the streams and flowers of the forest floor. Herman glanced at the finder's map. It indicated they were now in a place called May Ethor. Wow. Lefwen breathed, her blue eyes alight with wonder. I've never seen anything quite like this. Neither have I. Herman agreed as he took in the intricate designs carved into the bark of the tree homes. But we mustn't linger. I wish Glitterfleck was here to advise us. We may not be welcome. Can we take a break? Gifford grumbled rubbing his stone arm against his aching side. I'm hungry, and they might have food. How can you still be hungry after all those pastries you ate at the Lycanthian camp? Lefwen teased. Quiet. Herman whispered abruptly, raising a hand to silence them. He cocked his head, listening intently to the rustling leaves and faint, melodic murmurs carried on the wind. Before they could take another step, a group of slender, Silver-haired elves emerged from the shadows, their faces etched with disapproval. One elf stepped forward, eyeing the trio with an air of haughty disdain. Who dares trespass into our sacred land? The elf demanded, speaking in a refined tone. We do not take kindly to intruders. Please forgive our intrusion. Herman implored. We mean no harm. We just escaped from the Valley of Lecanthia. The mention of Lycanthia caused the elves to murmur amongst themselves, their elegant features twisting with distaste. Lycanthia is cursed, the elf declared. We cannot risk having its taint brought to our pristine village. If you are there, it is possible that you are one of those valley monsters. Us? Gifford scoffed and approached the elves. Look here, you fair-skinned freaks. Do we look like werewolves to you? Leave our village at once, the lead elf ordered, his voice cold and unyielding. 
Do not spread your cursed presence here. Hermann tried to find the right words to defuse the situation. We understand your concerns. He said slowly, his grey eyes pleading. We'll leave immediately. We simply seek safe passage through your lands. As Hermann spoke, Lefwin offered a warm, reassuring smile to the elves. The trio backed away from the village, showing their willingness to comply. Fine, we'll leave it. Gifford grumbled, his green eyes narrowing in defiance. But I just want to say to you, pointy in pests are being completely unreasonable. Silence, lonely human. The elf commanded. He pulled back an arrow, releasing it with a sharp twang. The arrow whizzed through the air and embedded itself in a trunk of a tree, mere inches from Gifford's head. Yeah. Gifford yelped. You missed some superior being you are. Herman sighed, exasperated. Gifford, it was a warning shot. Warning or not, I don't like being shy. As a consequence of your intrusion, insolence, and probability that you are one of the cursed ones. The lead elf said in a melodic yet intimidating voice. I deem your existence unwanted. He gave a signal to the other elves, whose patience had grown thin. Destroy them! The elves' faces contorted with anger. If that don't spill the ink. Herman said. Run! Gifford, you make a lousy ambassador. Lefwin said as they sprinted through the forest, dodging low hanging branches and leaping over gnarled roots that seemed to reach for their ankles like ancient, grasping finger. The elves took off after the trio, their light bodies weaving through the forest with astonishing speed. It quickly became apparent to Herman that they would soon be caught and or killed. The agitated bees inside Gifford's jar thus angrily as they were jostled around in the pursuit, their hums growing louder. The trio narrowly escaped several times, ducking behind trees and diving into hollows like frightened rabbits fleeing a fox. Can't run much longer. The chubby Gifford panted, clutching the jar tightly as if it were a lifeline. Got any more tricks up your sleeve, big brother? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. His eyes darted around the forest for an escape route or a way to reason with their pursuers. Herman silently prayed for guidance, hoping that the Lord would once again grant them deliverance from danger. For now, all they could do was run, their breaths coming in ragged gasps and their hearts pounding like drums in their chests. The elven arrows singing a deadly song just inches from their ears. Enough! Gifford yelled, his face red and sweating, heaving a breath. He hurled his jar at the elven pursuers. It shattered on impact, releasing an angry swarm upon the silver-haired pursuer. Buzz off! Gifford shouted, grinning at his own play of words. The elves halted their pursuit, the once elegant and poised things now flailed wildly, swatting at the irate insects with their bow. Herman glanced at the map. Quick, this way! He urged, leading Lefren and Gifford down a hidden path through the forest. They could hear the distant yelps of the frustrated elves fading behind them as they ran, the beast proving an effective distraction. As they put distance between themselves and their pursuers, they came upon a chasm, a raging river far below. A long vine dangled tantalizing from a nearby tree, offering the possibility of escape. Herman leapt forward, seized the vine and swung across the chasm, landing safely on the other side. He passed the vine to left when he followed suit, her movements agile and graceful. Gifford, come on! Lefwen called. Gifford's stone arm made it difficult for him to swing, but with a combination of effort and Herman's reaching hand, he made it across. Together, they yanked the vine down, severing the link between them and the elves. As the trio left the dark confines of Mayathor Forest, the morning light became more apparent, and the landscape changed dramatically. Lush greenery gave way to barren plains, the trees becoming sparse and stunted. Vegetation grew scarce as they ventured further from the forest, until they found themselves standing at the edge of a vast, hot desert. Where are we now? Gifford asked using his stone arm to block the harsh sun's glare. Let's consult the map! Herman suggested, unrolling the parchment. 
A glowing blue star pointed them in the direction they needed to go. We are traveling into the restless expanse. Sounds lovely. Lefwin quipped. The sun beat down relentlessly as they trudged along the endless scorching land. Sand shifted under Herman's feet, a reminder of how quickly time was passing by. Their time was running out. If they didn't find a way to reverse the stone curse before another night passed, the people of Windstorm Island would turn to ash. Herman knew it was dumb and insignificant compared to what was at stake, but he felt like each moment that passed was a missed opportunity to truly express his feelings for Lefwin. Herman paced his steps with hers. He purposely caused them to distance themselves from Gifford. When Herman felt that Gifford was out of earshot, he mustered up some courage. Lefwin, I'm glad for your company on this adventure. We've known each other for a long time, and I just wanted to say, I mean, I wanted to ask. However, a howling wind blew across the desert, making his voice barely audible. What? Sorry, Herman, I couldn't hear you. Lefwin said, a stinging sandstorm whipped up around them, forcing them to shield their faces, obscuring their vision. Wait up, guys. Oh no. Help! Gifford shouted suddenly. I'm sinking. Herman and Leffen turned to see Gifford's legs disappearing into a patch of quicksand. Desperation filled Gifford's eyes as he reached out, grabbing no. hold of Leffen's foot just in time. Oh. Leffen cried. Her voice strained with effort as she and Herman worked to drag Gifford free from the treacherous sands. When they were a safe distance away, they collapsed on the core sand. Thanks. Gifford breathed in relief. During their brief rest, Leffen spotted something in the distance. Look! She cried, pointing at a figure in the distance. Could it be? Gifford squinted. It's Bill Baird. I'd recognize that ridiculous hat anywhere. He panted, wiping sweat from his brow. I'm not sure if we are falling in by our own accord or we are being duped and he's pulling our strings. Herman said. Then let's not keep him waiting. Lefwin declared, her quirky optimism undiminished by their arduous journey. Let's not be hasty. We'll climb that rocky plateau and keep an eye on him from above. Herman suggested. Then we'll pounce on him. Gifford added. Silently, they crept up the plateau, hearts pounding with anticipation. From their vantage point, they watched the unsuspecting Bill Baird. The mid-afternoon sun cast a merciless glare upon the trio. But in the shadowy canyon below, Bill Baird strolled comfortably, unaware of his pursuers. Why does he get to enjoy the shade while we are up here, Bake? Gifford whined, wiping sweat from his pudgy cheeks. As they continued their cautious pursuit, Bill Baird reached the outskirts of a bustling desert marketplace. It sprawled like a patchwork quilt of vibrant awning and tents before a vast empire. The air was thick with the aroma of exotic spices. At first glance it looked like the marketplace was filled with people doing business. But as the trio leaned in closer, it was not people they observed, but the reptilian creatures. These lizardmen conducted their business with great fervor. They wore layers of clothing to protect themselves from the intense sun. Their colorful skin vary in hues of green, yellow, and red. Many of the lizardmen wielded scimitars, daggers, and spears, a testament to their strength and confidence. The trio tore their attention away from the lizardmen long enough to see Bill Baird slip undetected through an alley. He snuck towards a cage that held a small red dragon. A blue gem adorned its forehead. The mysterious puppet vendor was up to something. Gifford's green eyes narrowed. Something's not right here. From their elevated vantage point, they observed as Bill Bear deftly unlocked the cage, releasing the winged lizard. A chorus of alarm shouts erupted from the marketplace as the creature took flight while angry lizardmen gave chase, throwing spears. Amidst the chaos, Bill Bear vanished down an alleyway, his intentions under. Look! Gifford exclaimed. His eyes fell upon an abandoned vendor's stall laden with jars of various shapes and sizes. 
His eyes lit up when he saw the perfect replacement for his broken bug collecting jar. He paused, remembering its shattered remains, now lost among their fall forest. A new jar? I got to have it. Are you seriously thinking about that now? Herman hissed, trying to keep his focus on Bill Baird. It's too dangerous. However, Gifford, unable to resist the lure, had already begun his wobbly descent down the rocky hillside, each step laden with suspense as he inched closer to the abandoned vendor stall. Lefwin and Herman exchanged a resigned glance before pursuing him. Come back, Gifford! Lefwin said urgently. In all my born days, please, don't do this. Herman pleaded, his concern for his brother outweighing their original mission. As Gifford neared the stall, his fingers trembled with excitement. The jar was just an arm's length away. With the stealth of a desert fox, Gifford reached out and delicately snatched the jar from the stand, tucking it into his pouch as if plucking a ripe fruit. Got it! He exclaimed triumphantly. May the Lord forgive you, Herman said, shaking his head. No sooner had Herman's words left his lips than the trio found themselves surrounded by a group of irate well, lizardmen, the their scimitars glinting the menacingly in the sun. Lefwen and Gifford froze, their eyes wide with fear as the reptilian warriors encircled them. Yes! We have you now, intruders! One of the lizardmen declared, grabbing Herman's arm. The creature's claws nearly pierced his skin. Leaping lizards, looks like we've been caught. Gifford muttered as two other lizardmen restrained him and left when. Tie them up! Barked an imposing lizardman, his emerald green scale shimmering in the light. We'll toss these intruders into the underground prison. With no choice but to comply, Herman, Lefwen, and Gifford allowed themselves to be tied with coarse ropes and marched through the marketplace attracting the attention of curious onlookers. The Lizardmen populace watched with a mix of suspicion and amusement as the trio stumbled along, bound and helpless. The three friends were marched to a dank, dimly lit prison cell and thrown inside unceremoniously. It reeked of decay and despair. As the heavy gate slammed shut behind them, Gifford slumped against the cold stone wall, his stomach protesting audibly. The prison was a far cry from the opulence of their empire above ground. This is terrible. Gifford complained. I'm so hungry. I know, Gif. Herman comforted. I wish we were home. On the bright side. Leffen said with cheery buoyancy. The acoustics in here are fantastic. It makes me feel like singing. Please don't. Gifford muttered. When afternoon turned to evening, the Lizardman guards returned bearing a meager meal of stale bread, wilted lettuce, brackish water, and wriggling grub worms. The sight of the unappetizing fare made the trio's stomachs churn. Lord, grant me wisdom. Herman prayed softly, closing his eyes and seeking solace. With nothing else to do, he drew the island of Memoria from his satchel and began to read more of his father's words, hoping for some insight into their current predicament. As he flit through the pages filled with his father's intricate illustrations and flowing script, he found a passage detailing the Lizardman's deeply ingrained superstitions and devotion to false gods. Herman shared his discovery with Lefwen and Gifford. Their eyes widened with understanding and hope, as they realized that this knowledge might be their key to freedom. Let's use this to our advantage. Lefwen suggested. Perhaps your public bard can help us. She mused, her quirky optimism shining through even in their dire circumstance. As the trio huddled together, they whispered plans beneath the flickering torchlight. Their determination, like the embers of a dying fire, refused to be extinguished by the lizardmen. Together, they would find their way out of this prison and continue their quest, no matter what challenges lay ahead. Blark, Herman said, retrieving the dragon marionette from his satchel. Now's your time to shine. The golden dragon marionette had seemed to shimmer in the dim light of the prison, its silver spikes and claws glinting menacingly. Herman glanced at Lefwin, who nodded her encouragement. With practiced ease, he animated the dragon marionette, 
making it appear as though it were alive and furious. Behold! Herman bellowed deep and raspy, using ventriloquism to throw his voice so it seemed to emanate from Blarg. It even made Gifford and Lefwin jump a little. The wrath of the Blarg dragon has fallen upon you! The mighty lizard god has sent his divine servant to punish you for capturing his chosen ones! Lefwin and Gifford exchanged glances at the remarkable imitation. They silently urged each other to play along, giving reverence to the puppet and lending credibility to Herman's performance. The lizardmen guards froze, their reptilian eyes riveted on the dancing marionette. They hissed in fear, their forked tongues flickering in and out of their mouths. The guards' superstitions had rendered them vulnerable, and Herman was quick to capitalize on the opportunity. Release your prisoners! Herman commanded, his voice booming with authority and eerie mimicry of the lizardman's own speech. Or face the terrible curse of Blood Dragon! The lizardmen hesitated, their grip on their weapons faltering as they glanced at one another. Uncertainty written across the scaly faces. One of the guards stepped forward, trembling. Mercy, great blood dragon, we release them. Just do not bring your curse upon us. He pleaded, hastily unlocking the prison door. Unbind our hands and feet, lest the lizard god unleash his fury upon you. Lefwin added with righteous indignation. The trembling guards complied, cutting the ropes that bound the trio. Herman continued to hold Blarg aloft. Superstitious lizardmen cowered before the marionette, allowing the three friends to hastily slip past them and out of the prison. Quickly! Herman urged, consulting the finder's map as they escaped the desert empire. This way! Following the map's guidance, the trio navigated the parched landscape traversing treacherous trails and rocky canyons. Their muscles ached and their throats burned from thirst, but they pressed onward. At last, they reached an entrance to a vast cavern. Its gaping mouth, along with the finder's map, enticed them to step inside. By the Lord's grace, we've made it this far. Herman said, leading the way, venturing deeper into the cavern. It grew darker and clammier but otherwise safe enough. The only sounds were their own shuffling footsteps and increasingly laboured breathing, until suddenly a hidden edge opened beneath them. With cries of alarm, they slid down a steep incline, landing hard on the cold, unforgiving stone below. It's so dark. Is everyone all right? Herman's concerned voice echoed in the abyss. That was fun! Lefwin sang with her usual optimism. Let's do it again. Herman took that as a yes. I'm all right. Gifford answered. Though my feet are tired, and I'm hungry, and I have a stone arm. He complained. And can you tell little Miss Ray's sunshine to stop being so chipper? I'm glad everyone is all right. Herman said with relief. I think we should stay close. He squinted trying to adjust his eyes to the inky blackness that now surrounded them. He wished that glitter fleck was still with them to light the way. The smell of damp, musty earth mingled with the pungent scent of steam and oil. The sound of machinery echoed faintly in the distance, accompanied by hushed snickers that seemed to come from all around them. It was all too clear that they were no longer alone. Suddenly, a booming voice echoed off the cavern walls causing the trio to jump in alarm. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Goblin City's favorite game show. Timpani drums pounded faster and faster until it culminated in a resounding gong. Tunnels of Terror! A thousand voices replied in unison from the darkness, sending shivers down their spines. <laughs>